Myanmar is currently going through one of the most significant transition in its modern history. After 50 years of isolation, it has finally opened up. In 2008, the government initiated wide ranges of reforms to address the macroeconomic issues and fulfill the population's unmet needs and demands. If Myanmar wants to maintain its current pace of economic growth, the public finance sector needs to be strengthened. So how do you think the country can develop the economy and build on human development? Over the next 10 minutes, we hope to answer this important question, provide you with an overview of the public finance sector in Myanmar, and propose some recommendations to improve its performance. Let us explain public finance in simpler terms. Myanmar's government is like a household that has to efficiently allocate all the resources to meet all the family members' needs, but, of course, in a much bigger picture. Like in a family, every citizen's need for education, health, public transport, and public safety is a concern of the whole country. This is possible only when the government has enough resources to invest in these. Citizens work to earn money for a living. The government likewise earns a revenue from different resources like tax collection from business and incomes, allowances, and aid. The government prepares the annual budget and gets an approval from the parliament. However, these resources are limited, so the government must prioritize when and where these limited resources should go based on what citizens need and how much it may cost. Do you know that Myanmar's tax earning in 2013 accounted for only 6.1% of the GDP? And a landlocked country like Nepal has a tax revenue to GDP ratio higher than Myanmar? Despite the significant growth and openness of the economy, people in Myanmar have not been able to benefit from the growth and market liberalization. Myanmar was ranked 150 out of 187 countries worldwide in the Human Development Index. This shows the country has not invested enough in building people's capacity for future competitiveness. The Global Competitiveness Index this year ranked Myanmar 134th out of 144 countries, citing poor macroeconomic environment, including weak public institutions and poorly developed ICT infrastructure. The poor conditions of infrastructure make it difficult for people to have access to health care and education. Prevalence of rampant corruption reflects one of the major causes of these problems. Myanmar has also compromised its priorities, which in return are further jeopardizing the conditions. It spent about 4.5% of its GDP on the military, while India only spent around 2.5% of its GDP, Singapore at 3.4% and the United States at 3.8% in 2013. Myanmar instead spent less on education and health services respectively compared to higher spending by India, Singapore and the US in 2014. The presence of large informal economy in the country is also responsible for making it difficult for the government to collect enough taxes for public expenditure. The power sector is one of the least developed and unreliable sectors in the region. In 2014, the Asian Development Bank Outlook reports that 73% of the population do not have access to electricity. All the figures about Myanmar present a grim picture of its uncompetitiveness in human development, labor, skills, and an obstacle to develop its own economy. Therefore, Huge government investment is needed to improve the socioeconomic conditions of people as well as to build competent human capital and infrastructure to encourage economic development and growth and also to attract foreign investments to the country. To make it happen, Myanmar needs to improve its public finance performance that would bring about structural changes and reforms in four primary areas. Tax administration, tax policy, transparency and accountability, and fiscal decentralization. Tax administration. As an important source of the Myanmar government's revenue, taxes reflect the participation and contribution of citizens and companies to build and develop their country. Ideally, a country should be able to financially support itself as the revenue from tax collection should have a greater weight than other sources. However, this is not a piece of cake, 
and all countries are still struggling to gain more income from taxes. The challenge in this case is to raise the awareness, willingness, and compliance of the citizens and companies to pay their taxes. Myanmar is blessed with many natural resources, which supposedly would give high tax revenues. But the current problem Myanmar is facing is that the elites close to the former military junta dominate the extractive industry and do not comply with taxes. While more than 50% of the people live in rural areas, forcing them to pay taxes would stir political turmoil. For this reason, it is important to keep corporate taxes for businesses at a low rate to attract investors. Other causes of low tax revenues include rampant corruption within the tax system and other public institutions, an unwillingness among business circles close to the former military junta to pay taxes to the government, and, last but not least, the complicated tax system that makes it difficult for people to comply. Internal institutional weaknesses like insufficient and poorly organized data as well as poor capacity among tax officials further impede tax collection and make it difficult for policymakers to provide an effective assessment on performance of Myanmar's existing tax system. Here are some recommendations to improve tax administration in Myanmar. The key to improving compliance will be to strengthen the Internal Revenue Department's institutional and human capacity. A rational, modern, and efficient tax administration will require well-trained and well-paid staff supported by modern, computerized tax administration systems. The organization must also adapt to an electronic data processing environment. Among other things, establishing an identifier for taxpayers will allow for better documentation, control, and consistency, as well as enabling critical tax policy analysis. Tax Policy Myanmar needs to continue reforming its taxation system in order to promote a fairer and more transparent tax system with the amendment of old tax laws and the adoption of new ones. Currently, Myanmar has a complicated tax system. Fifteen types of taxes are collected by seven departments under six different ministries. In the case of personal income tax, it contains 12 different brackets with progressive tax rates. On the other hand, the commercial tax, which is a turnover tax on goods and services, contains nine different rates and is also very complicated. Myanmar's GDP is still relatively low because the population, instead of productivity, has expanded. The productivity gap exists in all sectors, reflecting that the economy relies heavily on agriculture, considered as a low productivity sector in many countries. Due to the low GDP, there is a need for Myanmar to bring in foreign investment as it cannot rely on collecting taxes alone from people for revenues. A business-friendly and investment-oriented tax system is essential to foster inclusive and equitable economic growth by revenue mobilization. Here are three recommendations to improve tax administration in Myanmar. Dreamlining the tax regime will make it easier for businesses and entrepreneurs to comply, therefore improving the business climate and increasing revenue mobilization. These tax rates, especially the commercial tax, could be simplified. One of the most feasible changes is to reform the income tax law into a self-assessment system in which the taxpayers are responsible to declare, compute, and pay their own income tax. A more user-friendly taxation system would help achieve better tax compliance and bring more awareness among taxpayers. Thirdly, the government can create tax-free zones or specific economic zones with conditions for domestic and foreign investors to encourage more productivity and local growth. Transparency and Accountability Myanmar is known as one of the most corrupt countries in the world. The corruption inhibits Myanmar from attracting foreign firms or foreign direct investment because of uncertainty. The long history of government favoritism towards domestic producers or state-owned enterprises 
prevents a level playing field that discourages new investment in Myanmar. Therefore, it is important for Myanmar to strengthen the legal framework and mechanisms to promote more fiscal transparency and accountability, which will have a strong impact on curbing corruption, raising the revenue, and improving expenditures. More transparency in Myanmar's public finance system could mean broader public access to the information on how the government manages its revenues, expenditures, and debts. Our recommendations for transparency and accountability are the following. Establish a fiscal analysis unit within the Ministry of Finance and Revenue with staff trained in modern fiscal analysis and equipped with the necessary tools for putting those techniques to practical use. The budget must become comprehensive. All government operations must be reported, both on spending and revenues. Thousands of remaining other ministerial accounts in Myanmar need to be put out on public record. State-owned enterprises should become liable to the same rules and taxes that apply to privately run firms, while publishing each ministry's budget. Strengthen the follow-up actions of the Public Accounts Committee in the Parliament, as well as the Auditor General's Office. Fiscal Decentralization In the long run, once tax policy, accountability, and transparency have been achieved, Myanmar should decentralize its fiscal administration to improve the efficiency of tax collection. Though it is essential to keep in mind that fiscal decentralization would encourage more corruption and problems for the country if prerequisites are not met. Administratively, Myanmar is divided into seven regions, seven states, union territory, and self-administered areas. Although the fifth schedule of the Constitution allows regions and states to generate revenue from sources like land, excise, and water tax royalty from fisheries, toll tax, registration fee, and salt tax, all these sources are not sufficient to cater to the needed expenses. In the last three decades, The country, which is administratively governed as a federation, has transferred and empowered the sub-regional governments to generate revenue from its available resources. A second potential benefit of fiscal decentralization is the promise of increased revenue mobilization. This happens because decentralization can broaden the overall tax base. Our recommendations for fiscal decentralizations are share revenues from specific resources, such as natural resources, according to political agreements, reduce military or defense spending, and redistribute the resources into more productive spending in health, education, infrastructure, and other main resources, pursue national priorities and services with some locally provided component such as health and education. To make a transition to a more developed economy, Myanmar has to increase its regional and global competitiveness through human development. To do so, in the short run, the government needs to improve its tax administration, tax policy, and promote transparency and accountability In the long run, the fiscal administration shall be decentralized to ensure the efficiency of tax collection.